Now we're going to see the hepatitis virus. We have hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, hepatitis D, um, and hepatitis E. Um, these ones are fecal oral, hepatitis A, and hepatitis B. So fecal oral, and they are non enveloped. Um, hepatitis E infects most of the time pregnant patients and could be uh, fatal. On biopsy, we will see patchy necrosis. Hepatitis A is seen on, uh, on the developed countries. This hepatitis A uh, on a biopsy. Here we see patchy necrosis. Here we see swallowing hepatocytes with councilman bodies and a monocytic infiltration. Um, the prophylaxis for hepatitis A virus is if the patient has less than 12 months, we will vaccinate. If he has more than 12 months, immunoglobulins. <sighs> now, the hepatitis A belongs to the picornaviridae family. Hepatitis E belongs to the epaviridae. Hepatitis B to the epadnaviridae. Pathnaviridae family, hepatitis C, flaviviridae. And hepatitis D has its own family. Alright, now, um, these are transmitted by sexual content and IV uh, intravenous drug users. This most common with intravenous drug use and this with sexual content. Now, um, let's focus first on hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis C virus is a RNA positive, uh, RNA positive, uh, sorry, RNA negative, RNA negative, RNA positive, DNA, RNA variable, and RNA positive. So the only one that has DNA is the hepatitis B virus. Now, this is a negative RNA, so as most of the negative sense RNA viruses, this contains a RNA polymerase. Uh, this is a RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now, the important issue is that this RNA polymerase lacks the activity 3 prime, 5 prime exonuclease activity. So, there is no proofreading. So, there are a lot of um, mutations, and for that, we cannot do a vaccine against the hepatitis C virus. Now, the <coughs> The genetics is this virus will enter the cell. This is the nucleus of the cell. He is entering the virus with the RNA. Then the RNA will be transcribed to another RNA, but this time is a positive sense RNA. Goes into the ribosomes, proteins, and then this RNA is transcribed to a negative sense RNA, and then again to to positive RNA, etc. But this would be back into a virus. Now, the hepatitis C virus on a biopsy, the infected hepatocyte would look as a lymphocytic aggregate plus macrosteatosis or macrovesicular steatosis, um, focal. And now the treatment. A hepatitis C virus is the only hepatitis that is treated in acute and as well as chronic. Uh, we have the NS5A inhibitors, NS5B inhibitors, NS3A, 4A inhibitors, interferon, and ribavirin. So this is an inhibitor of a phosphoprotein of the virus that is involved in the replication. This is against the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, against the protease. Rebabirin is against the, or is, uh, is blocking the inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, so it decreases the synthesis of one. Adverse effect, hemolytic anemia, and teratogenicity. Interferon, adverse effects, pre symptoms, arthralgias, myalgias. Um, depression, thrombocytopenia. The depression could be treated with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. 
Um, the N is 5A inhibitors are Lidipasvir, Ombitasvir, Belpatasvir. N is 5B inhibitors, Sofosbuvir, and Dasabuvir. And the protease inhibitors are Simeprevir, Grasoprevir, Doseprevir, Glecaprevir. Adverse effects of most of these include headache and fatigue. This also diarrhea and simeprevir photosensitivity and rash. Um, hepatitis C virus serology. We have the antibody. Um, the antibody is not a protective antibody. That is, if it is present, it means active infection. Active infection. Um, so if it is present, we will do a PCR in order to see the levels of. RNAs that are there, and if it is negative, that doesn't mean that the patient has no hepatitis C virus because it could be very, very acute, and so there is no time to develop the an antibody. So, in that case, that is, if the antibody is negative and we suspect hepatitis C virus infection, we need to do the PCR. And there is no prophylaxis um, for no post crucial prophylaxis. The Incidence um, is not very high, so there will be no prophylaxis for hepatitis C virus. Um, now, hepatitis B virus. This is a DNA virus. So here we have this cell. This is the this is the nucleus of this cell, the DNA. Here enters the virus. The DNA is circular, partial. DNA. The HBV virus has a DNA polymerase uh, with DNA dependent or RNA dependent activity. So, first, the DNA um, polymerase DNA dependent activity comes and completes the DNA. Then, this will be inserted here on the DNA of the cell, and then the RNA polymerase of the cell will transcribe this into RNA. This will be produced proteins. Then this RNA is transcribed to DNA. By now the activity DNA polymase RNA dependent. And so this will be part and then the virus uh, is released. This is the genetics. Now for um in the biopsy we will see just ground glass appearance of the hepatocytes. And the, the post-exposure prophylaxis is if, if the patient is vaccinated, we should not give anything, nothing. If the patient is unvaccinated, we will do immunoglobulins plus vaccine. Now, for example, uh, babies, babies that are born to a mother with HBV positive, um, babies are not born with vaccine, so we need to give immunoglobulins plus vaccine. Now, if a patient is saying that is vaccinated, we need to test the presence of the uh, IgG antibody against the surface antigen. And if it is present, the patient is immunized, certainly, or well, uh, probably due to the vaccine. But so there will be no need to vaccinate the patient. So to this is just we need to conclude that the patient has been vaccinated, seeing the, um, have the antibody against the surface antigen. Um, now, hepatitis D is a virus that needs to infect the cell when the hepatitis B is present. So if there is no infection with hepatitis B, hepatitis D will never infect the cell. Now, uh, lastly, I want to spend a minute talking about the serology of hepatitis B virus. We have the antigen of the surface, antigen E, IgM against the core, IgG against the core, IgG against the surface antigen and IgG against E antigen. So the E antigen me measures infectivity. If it is present, means greater risk of infection. If we have the antibody, means less risk of infection. Anyway, now we can have acute window period recovery, chronic. Um, chronic agudized, vaccination, and natural uh, immunization. 
So if it is acute, we will have the surface antigen and the antibody against the core IgM will be positive. In the window period, we will just have this positive, that is, mm, between the appearance of the surface uh, antigen antibody and the disappearance of the surface antigen. In recovery, we will have these three protected antibodies. In chronic, we do, would not have the surface antigen antibody, uh, but we could have the other ones. Um, and because it is chronic, we have the surface antigen present. This could or could not be present, but certainly this would not be present. If don't, this would be called a agudized. If it is agudized, now we have all these cellulose. If the patient now is but is immunized, then the surface antigen antibody would be present. And if it is due to a natural cause, that is, if the patient was infected with hepatitis B virus, and then the a uh, antibody against the core would also be positive. So, acute window period, recovery, immunization, immunization due to natural cause, immunization due to vaccine, recovery, chronic, uh, chron chronic, chronic, chronic agudized, chronic agudized, and plus this positive antigen.